Y'all, I hit live before I had my camera up. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, Betty. Hi, Sue. Let me get this. I, I hit live thinking these things were all plugged in, and they are not. And they're a tangled mess. Oh, no. Oh, no. How is everybody? Can you hear me yet or no? Can you hear me? Can you? That's the question is, can you hear me? Let me know. Doesn't seem to. Okay, you can hear me? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Y'all, this place. Look at this place. Look at this place. Okay. I have been in the midst of sewing all day. It has been a wild ride. I have... Oh, you can't see it. I have garments going. I have quilts going. I have everything going. So, hi, everybody. Alfred, you're going to have to lay down, dude. I am so excited. I do have my... Hi, everybody. Look at this awesome group of people. We got Sue, Susanna, Teresa, Jean, Francie, Joe, Lynette. Francie Joe, I always call you Francie Joe because that's what you are on Facebook. Do you prefer to be Francie? I went off the Facebook. Took Alfred's collar so y'all don't have to listen to him jingle around here. Oof, this hair. So what y'all up to? Oh. Yes, this is one of the ones that is not washable. Orlando's here. <laughs> what an awesome group. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Look how pretty that is. Okay, Francie Joe is fine. I like to make sure I'm using y'all's preferred names. The Sea Turtles 99.9% .9 done. Yes. Are you going to be working on it while we chat? Something in my eyeball. Yeah, something in my eyeball. Oof. What y'all doing while we chat tonight? I had my hair in a had my hair in a bun all day. We've been sewing up a storm. You'd be so proud of me. So proud of me. Oh, so proud. All right. I'm really excited. Of all this freestanding lace fun happening tonight. Do do. Oh. So beautiful. How nice is that? Working on my flag for my new class, then making dinner. I shoveled some dinner into my mouth. I shoveled a tiny bit of dinner into my mouth, and then I'm going to eat after this. <laughs> Thank you so much. These butterflies are part of a blog post that will be coming up on We All Sew very soon. So you get a little preview of it. Shadow box. Shadow box. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be really cute. Real cute. And goodness knows. Hello, Eileen. Goodness knows I have had some trials and tribulations during this freestanding lace. So I got lots to tell you. <laughs> I have a whole lot to tell you. We got to kick it off. So yeah, this is sewing room. I sewed up until dinner was ready. And then I ate dinner and I came to hang out with y'all. And talk to you about freestanding lace. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to get started. 
I normally wait five minutes and it's normally over five minutes, but I have a lot to tell you today. So we're going to dive right in. We're going to get it, get it going. I have notes. That's how serious I am about today. <laughs> I am so serious that I have notes because there is a lot. There is a lot to get through. Um, okay. Let's first talk about what freestanding lace is and isn't, what freestanding applique is, because technically these are freestanding applique. If you have, as always, in case I see a lot of familiar names, my peeps, love y'all for showing up. Thank you so much. Um, but if you're new here, just ask your questions at any time and I will get around to them, even if I get distracted by them. We just roll with the punches here. So we are talking about freestanding lace and freestanding, hello, Tanisha. We're talking about freestanding lace and freestanding applique. That one had one of my hairs stuck to it. So this is, there's no, um, there are some thread boogers on the back, but there is no stabilizer on the back. This is just thread. And this is freestanding applique, not freestanding lace. So there is also fabric with this one. And we'll talk about what fabric this is. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I love these butterflies. I did these butterflies in Aurifil thread, um, monochromatic. So the entire butterfly was like one spool of thread color um, for um, a thread launch, which was really beautiful as well. So freestanding lace is lace that stands on its own. It is lace that um, it is lace that you can either add to clothing, you could construct with it. There's freestanding lace, Christmas trees, boxes, Santa Clauses, um, masks, ears. There's freestanding lace, everything. Uh, even lace pieces for garments, they would technically be freestanding lace because it's not lace fabric that you have bought. It is an embroidered piece of lace that can stand on its own. Freestanding lace has no fabric at all. We have stabilizer and thread, and then that stabilizer washes away. It's the way that they have laid down. There's another beautiful one. It's the way that they have laid down these beautiful stitches, there is a foundational stitch pattern that allows it to stand up on its own, no fabric, once all of that stabilizer is washed away. It's so cool. Um, not all embroidered lace is freestanding lace, and certainly not all embroidered designs are freestanding lace. I've heard that a lot recently where somebody's like, oh, I thought this was, it said it was a lace butterfly. So I did, I stitched it out on wash away. I washed it away and all I was left with was a pile of thread. It has to be labeled freestanding lace um, or freestanding applique. Now, freestanding applique, that's what this is. So this design is actually freestanding lace in the center there, as you can see, we can, I can see right through it, right to see you. There is freestanding lace in the center and there's freestanding applique in the wings. So this is fabric out here, fabric. We're gonna talk about what kinds of fabric you should use. Sometimes I get these urges and I just can't help but do these things. So we're gonna talk about what kind of fabric you should be using out there, okay? They are gorgeous. This is the front side, the correct, the right side. And this is the back side, just as beautiful. We need it to be just as nice on the front as it is on the back. There is definitely a right and a wrong side. You can tell that the back, <laughs> Susanna said ADHD for the win. Absolutely. That's why I get the urge to do these kinds of things and I have to just go with it and just live my best life, you know? If y'all wanted a teacher who actually paid attention, you'd go hang out with somebody else. Okay. <laughs> so you can definitely tell the back side 
um, it's where things have been cut. There is a little bit of tension difference on the back, but the back looks, for all intents and purposes, the back looks as good as the front. So it will. These colors are popping up so pretty on there. I cannot believe that. I just love the way that looks. That means it'll photograph really well as well. All right. So now that we know the difference between freestanding applique is freestanding lace with an applique in it, there's going to be fabric. Um, freestanding lace is no fabric, just thread. All of our stabilizer washes out. A hair on me. Okay. So remember that you have to look for, it will say very prominently, freestanding lace, blah, 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 blah. They do not hide the fact that it is freestanding lace, or at least OES. I have never come across a company that is very sneaky about the fact that it's freestanding lace. It will usually say it in the title. I know OESD will say freestanding lace Christmas tree, freestanding lace butterfly, freestanding lace ornament. Um, embroidery library will do the same thing. I have seen it on urban threads. I don't know if Kimber Bell has any. I, I need a good designs. It always says freestanding lace, blah, 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 or freestanding applique. You might also see FSL or FSA. So FSL and FSA are going to be freestanding lace, freestanding applique. So let's talk about our stabilizers. Um, you are going to use a wash away because we need their... <laughs> <laughs> who knows what I'm laughing about you're gonna need a wash away so that when you rinse it it washes away now this is what happens when you wash it away but you used a cutaway which I found out is really a common mistake. So you got to be careful. You got to be so careful. <laughs> this is what happens when you wash it away and you had freestanding lace. I'm really excited that I did this orange outline around here. It's really nice. Really nice. So you have to use a wash away stabilizer. What happened here was I was tired. I wasn't really paying attention. I just grabbed the mesh stabilizer that was closest to me, I stitched out my freestanding lace and I have pictures of the exact moment, me rinsing it out, that I realized it's a cutaway, it's not a wash away. So this beauty looks like this forever now, as does this beauty. Cause this has badge master on top, we'll talk about that, but it has that same mesh stabilizer back behind it. Ah! Oh! so frustrating <laughs> but it was good because and this is part of the reason because i have done one two three four five six this one messed up i don't remember what messed up here <clears throat> oh thread choices here were bad so i restarted yeah so because I've been doing so much freestanding lace and having these beautiful aha moments is why we're having this class right now. <laughs> it is still pretty, Francie. Joe, thank you so much. I agree. I'm going to make a, I'm going to get a cork board. Um, I think it'll be a cork board. I don't know. It'll probably have to be a big cork board. <laughs> but I'm going to hang these up in the back anyway because it's a great reminder that at the end of the day, it's just thread. It still looks beautiful. Um, I could cut it away and make a patch out of it. I could do a lot of things with this, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to hang this up and we will have a, oh crap. Think on your toes. It happens to all of us. <laughs> Inspiration board back there, because that's the number one thing that I heard when I had when I was showing off this mistake is like, oh, I'm so glad that you make mistakes like that too. The experts always make mistakes too. They always do. I have been around enough of them to know. I have been teaching this long enough to know that you're not immune to it. You get less and less of them. Hopefully they're few and far between, but 
It's also why you shouldn't force sewing. I was not into sewing and I didn't feel it. I was super forcing it and um, that's what happens. Silly mistakes happen. So um, you can see, where is it? So let's get this one. This is the correct stabilizer, by the way. Um, this is Aqua Mesh. So you want a wash away stabilizer that's more of a mesh, okay? Um, any brand is going to have a mesh wash away and that's what you want. Other brands, every brand will also have like a film wash away. See how this one's shiny? That's because this back layer is the cutaway and this top layer is a wash away. This top layer is pink. Do you think you could scratch your scratching post in another room? You've got about 12 of them. No, apparently not. My sister's cat, y'all. You know he's trouble. Okay. You can see the film nice and shiny. It's pretty much clear. I mean, you can see that you can't see, uh, you know, it's a little, um, not like completely clear, I guess. <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying. Um, so, when choosing stabilizers for your freestanding lace, we want a mesh stabilizer. Badge Master is recommended all the time for freestanding lace, and I don't get it. It actually really frustrates me. I don't know why they would tell you to do that if it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. I did um, long ago when I did these butterflies, I did two layers of Badge Master. So I did two layers of Badge Master and then I stitched it out. And by the time I got to this outline, which is a satin stitch outline, I mean, it happened long before that, but it was punching out, like completely punching out. So it's stitching and my butterfly is just falling away. I got in contact with people and I was like, why is this happening? What have I done? This, it's just kind of falling apart. And they're like, oh yeah, don't use Badge Master for that. And I was confused because the instruction said use two layers of Aquamesh or two layers of Badge Master. Why would they say that if you shouldn't do it? I have no idea. There's a few things in machine embroidery that are like this and it frustrates me to no end frustrates me is the nice way to put it. So if, um, so using our wash away, our mesh, it's going to hold up to the stitches better. It's going to hold up to this satin stitch better. It's not even like, it's not even like a tear away. I can't pull that away at all. And this is the correct one. I can even prove it. Um, this is the correct one because when I lick my fingers, which is how you should test your stabilizers, by the way, going forward, you can lick your finger and see if it melts or um, you can always just put it right in your mouth. These are starches, so it's, it's not bad. This one, I don't think this one has been punched out very badly. I think that's, oh yes, look, see, so annoying. This actually just popped away with that satin stitch. I think my cutaway behind it is keeping it pretty supported, but that satin stitch will just let it pop away. I, oh, you. Yeah, so you can imagine it'll do that right when you're stitching. Can you see that at all? So annoying. So annoying. Okay. You can use a layer of Aquamesh and a layer of Badge Master if you want to. Um, I used to think this was because Badge Master was cheaper. That was what I was told to keep it more economical, do a layer of the Badge Master and a layer of the Aquafilm. Well, that might be old advice because Badge Master is just as expensive, if not more expensive than Aquamesh. And you don't necessarily need the Badge Master at all. Here's why you may want 
badge master, the filmy one. These are made out of starch. And since it's made out of starch, the badge master is a little, I've noticed it leaves a little more starch in the project. Um, it's a little more, which seems odd, right? But anytime I have done a construction, so the freestanding lace tree, freestanding lace gingerbread house, I feel like the, the layer of badge master and aquamesh, I feel like those two different types of starch solutions together make it really awesome to build with. Now, obviously we aren't building with anything. This is going to sit on a wall and just be decorative and beautiful. These are. But we'll talk more about how you should treat your freestanding lace and freestanding applique. Different if you're constructing. We'll talk about that too. Okay, if you, if I have, um, this could be a lot of confusing words if you haven't done freestanding lace before. So don't hesitate to ask me to repeat myself. Don't hesitate to um, say, oh, what the hell are you talking about? Say that again, whatever. Um, I can re-summarize anything always. I love y'all. This is going to be, since it is different than a lot of other embroidery, you may want to do freestanding lace and then come back to this class. So watch it now, go try out one of these butterflies and then come back um, and try it out again because it is super useful. Uh, I have made the mistakes <laughs> so you don't have to. <laughs> oh, good gracious. So we have our badge master. This hair is actually just coming down from my head and tickling my chest. So if you see me keep doing this, it's actually just me tickling myself. It's, you know, it's like Susanna said, ADHD for the win. <gasps> oh, are you doing the Christmas Village, Francie Jo? Oh, gosh. Yes, that'll be awesome. Um, OESD has a whole Christmas Village that you can put together, and they come out with a new one every year, a new building. So last year was a train station. They have a quilt shop. They have a fire station. It's really cute. Toy store. Yeah. Super cute. Okay. So let's talk about, um, what, what are we talking about next? What are we talking about next? So we're going to talk more about this in the hooping section. Um, but these stabilizers are very slippery, okay? So since these stabilizers are, <laughs> since these stabilizers are so slippery, um, I'll sh I'm going to talk a little later about this T-pin method I use to make sure that the stabilizer doesn't slip through all of these needle perforations. The needle perforations are kind of against us. It's not great. Oh, Amelia, you scared me. The cats are running wild today, y'all. The needle perforations will push down this stabilizer and cause it to slip. Um, another way that I have had success with lack of, with not getting that slippage, because there's no fabric, right? Normally it'd be fabric and stabilizer and it would be really easy for our hoop to hold on to all of that. Not so much when it's just stabilizer and it's such a slippery stabilizer like this or the badge master. I have used, I used it today and I really liked it. I actually hooped Aquamesh Plus. So that is a water soluble sticky stabilizer. I hooped Aquamesh Plus um, like I hoop any of my sticky stabilizers hooped that and then floated. I mean, I guess you could call it floating. I floated the aqua mesh right here in the center. I just stuck it to the sticky stabilizer. So it was two layers of aqua mesh. Only one layer was hooped and it was sticky. So it wasn't going to slip on me. 
Um, that worked really well. I really liked that, especially since it could save you on your, oh, it's not this one. <laughs> I was trying to get it to lift up. Um, which one did I do that with? I did that with, oh, oh, I think I did it with this one. Worked beautifully. So it's technically two layers, but you can use, we have the sticky stabilizer hooped and we have just the size of the hoop stuck some more aqua mesh, some more um, wash away stabilizer so that we can use scrap pieces. It's a great way to save on stabilizer. I love it. Yes, I love that, Betty. I love that. Because, you know, stabilizers, it's not necessarily even that stabilizers aren't cheap, but it just sucks to waste all of this stabilizer every time. So that can really help. It can help too if you're doing, um, really if you need two layers, Ooh, if you need two layers of anything, like two layers of ultra clean and tear, you could do ultra clean and tear plus, which is the sticky one, and then just inside your hoop. So that's another stabilizer we can throw into the mix. I have links to all these stabilizers. Aren't you so lucky? I have links to all these stabilizers in the description if you would like them. So I was talking about the needle perforations and there is a ton of stitches in freestanding lace, even small ones, because like I said, um, and not as much with this one because it's applique, but we have to lay down all of these base stitches to essentially form a, a fabric, right? With our um, thread. So we have this fabric with our thread tons of needle perforations and our slippery stabilizer. And eventually you'll start to notice, um, and there's a little bit in here, you'll start to notice that there is some puckering around here. Maybe it'll start to bow a little more. You know you hooped it really well, but it starts to bow a little bit. We can help fight, or we can help make those needle perforations not be so damaging to our hooping um, not degrade our stabilizer as much by using Microtex needles. This was a, a big aha moment for me um, not too long ago, actually. I learned that because I use embroidery needles on everything, like literally everything. So it was a big aha moment for me to use Microtex. Microtex have the sh super sharp points. Um, nice slim points. So it just means that it's going to be going through this aqua mesh with ease. Super simple. Dee -dee -dee. Which will, and if it's pushing through here with ease, of course we're gonna use a fresh needle. You, I, let's talk honest. <laughs> let's talk real. I know that, um, cause I do it too. You know, maybe that Microtex needle, you are going to, you're like, I only sewed for a little bit before this. So I'm going to keep that needle in. If you feel that you can keep the needle and you want to keep embroidering with it, then set it aside, set it back in the packaging, set it, um, you know, put it in a little needle keeper, whatever you have to do, have a fresh Microtex for your freestanding lace. Have a fresh one. So it's super sharp and goes right through there. Super easy. Okay. The sharper, the sharper point, the slimmer point, <laughs> the sharper and slimmer point means that you will be able to um, easily move through that stabilizer less movement of your stabilizer. It's really nice. Brad, yeah. can you just put her in with Tori? Oh, okay. That's all she wants. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, the cats are taking over. Okay. <gasps> Francie Jo, yes. Um, I actually, 
Y'all are going to be shocked. I'm really going to shock you with this news. I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot until this moment that I wanted to have a blog post ready for you on how to melt your extra stabilizer bits. Um, to make a spray starch. So annoying. So we can actually melt these to make a spray starch. So save them. Definitely keep all of these. I That's what's currently in my spray bottle, and I love it. Let me tell you, I love it. It's awesome. I know you're shocked that I forgot to do something. <laughs> what does Susanna say? ADHD for the win. Okay. Um, da, da, da. Susanna said 70 or 80 Uh for Microtex, I used 80 Microtex because that's what I had around. You could definitely use 70. Um, eh, no, I lied. I lied, I lied, I lied. Um, bye, Betty. Have fun making dinner. I would use 80. Um, the reason why I would use 80 and not 70 is I'm a little concerned about the scarf on the 70. But... I used 80. That's what I had. That's what I had. And it worked great. Okay. 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 I will have a blog post coming up. I should write that down. Where do I write that down? Da -da -da. Where do I write that down? <laughs> <laughs> but I need that blog post. Um, yes. Yeah. I'll get a blog post going about that. Yes, because you can. Um, so actually, in so Francie Joe, I didn't read all the way through, but she said, I hear people melting the scraps in a spray bottle of water, then spray it or paint it onto projects. So you can actually, um, like for what Lynette is saying, Lynette's saying, I need to re-stiffen one of mine. I never thought of just melting down some scraps in water. So I would just take like a little Tupperware container, a bowl, take these scraps, and add water until you have a paste. Um, it, it is just starch. So it'll just become a, a gloppy starch. And then you could paint it on um, to the items that you have to re-stiffen. Yeah. So let's talk while we're here. Because I don't think I have it in my notes. Let's talk while we're here about rinsing it out. Yeah, let's do it. It's kind of jumping ahead, but let's do it. Let's get to the good stuff. When rinsing out, um, Lynette's talking about re-stiffening. When rinsing out, you, ha you have to decide how much of this starch and stabilizer are you removing. And you want to be very, very thoughtful about it because um, if it is construction, you basically want to get enough of that starch out that it isn't tacky when it dries. You'll rinse with warm water um, in the sink or you could do a bowl, but they only really do that for pictures. <laughs> get into the sink, get warm water, not hot, it will all of it will rinse out and you'll be sad. Get warm water. Um, like you do for like a kid's shower or bath or something, right? So it's a nice warm temperature, but it's not hot. So you're going to rinse out. And I encourage, as I go, I kind of encourage the stabilizer to pull away and get out of there. Um, any globiness that happens, I'm kind of pushing it out of there the whole time. I did take a video of this one. So there will be a video up about it um, on Instagram and I can share it in Facebook and stuff. So go ahead and get it out of there. Um, then you want your, I have, I have props galore, y'all. Who would I be if I wasn't, who would I be if I didn't have props, right? Then I tend to take a white towel and I blot it dry. 
And at that point, I will check it out and I'll feel it again. And if it feels tacky, if I can feel um, on this one, there were big globs that got caught up in here. So I ran it under the water, lukewarm again. You want to go bit by bit because you can always keep rinsing. And as we just talked about with Lynette, it's a little, it's more steps. You can totally do it. It's not hard, doesn't even take that long, but it is more steps to re-stiffen than it is to just um, rinse out the right amount the first time, which can be easier said than done. We're not stressed about it. So you rinse and rinse and rinse. If this is something, if this is freestanding lace that is going on a garment or it's freestanding lace, um, they have freestanding lace jewelry, they have freestanding lace that will come in contact with your skin. Then rinse it and rinse it and rinse it and rinse it. Make sure all of it's out of there. It won't be comfortable to wear. And then you'll wash it and it'll all be out of there anyway. So might as well do it in the first place. If it's going on a garment, rinse and 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 rinse. And rinse. Um, if it is going to be one of the bracelets, one of the necklaces, rinse it a lot. Just get it out of there. Um, mainly because... Well, that might not. Oh, I want so much freestanding lace jewelry. They will not make it for me. I just really like it. It kind of looks like a tattoo. Um, If it's going on a garment, you're going to wash the garment anyway. I'm going to assume. <laughs> I'm going to assume you're going to wash the garment anyway. So uh, rinse it. If you are building a pagoda... If you are building Santa Claus, if you're building a snowman that sits about this high, you want to rinse out the bare minimum that you have to rinse out. You want to rinse it out just so there isn't a cast, which can happen, definitely can happen. You don't rinse out enough. And then as it dries, that kind of cast transfers. So you want to rinse out just enough that there isn't a cast, just enough that it isn't globby and stuck in any places, and just enough that it isn't tacky to the touch. Like I said, go ahead. Um, I just sit there with my towel, and my towel is so stiff because it has the starch in here. So I rinse, 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 use my hands, and then I bring it over to the towel, and I'll blot dry and then I'll feel it, and then I'll repeat as many times as necessary. Um, being really delicate, really delicate, if I know that I'm gonna use it for construction. How's it going so far? People getting me? Am I making sense? Um, I have my blood orange and black raspberry, it's delicious. pausing a second, see if there are any questions, seeing if y'all need a break for your ears for a second. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I really wish that they would just get her into the room. <laughs> okay. Um, no questions. All right, cool. I'll keep moving and y'all can catch up with me. So let's talk about the fabric that you should use, the fabric that you can use for freestanding applique. Um, you should use a, uh, can you use quilting cotton is the question I get the most. Can I use quilting cottons that I like? And yes, you can. <laughs> I wish you heard that sad, sad sound of that cat getting picked up because she wanted to go into the bedroom of her own volition and she got picked up and went, meow. <laughs> no more back and forth, cat. Okay, can you use a quilting cotton? Yes. Um, I'm picking my words very carefully right here. No, I'm just going to say yes. 
I'm going to say yes. I was going to say, should you use a quilting cotton? No. I don't like it in mine. I was trying to figure out if that's personal preference <laughs> or if I should give you a, a, a professional recommendation not to. Honestly, I haven't done it a ton. I've done it a couple times and it worked out fine. I didn't dislike it. It was fine. Um, there are like the freestanding lace snowmen I keep talking about. And you can click through, um, through the links in the description. You can click through and go find more freestanding lace um, OESD designs. Y'all know their affiliate links through OESD. So I... I have only used quilting cotton like twice in classes. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure that I wasn't lying to you. I've only used quilting cotton twice in classes. Oh, <laughs> your cat just woke my cat. She jumped out of her skin. Oh, gosh. My cat really just wants to be adopted by my sister, particularly from sun up to sundown. I guess sun's way down at this point, but she really just wants to live in her room with her. So um, my favorite fabric to use for freestanding applique is organza. Organza. Nice and sheer. Um, I was doing two layers. I found out I was doing too much. Shocking. Not me doing too much. Never. Um, I then I do one layer of organza. And it's awesome. And let me, yes, yes, Eileen. That's exactly what I was going to say. <coughs> with the butterflies, with the um, snowmen, with all of these things, this comes in different colors, right? It's dyed different colors. So this is like a blush, peachy color. I was using white and it was a godsend. <laughs> You're going to be shocked, but I lost it in my sewing room. Cannot find it. I must have set it somewhere clever. I have no idea where the white organza is. No idea. I half expected to turn around and see it because um, that's usually what happens to me. I have no idea. It disappeared into the ether, apparently. But I had bought this peach color and it was a truly a gift from the sewing gods all of these are sewn with that peach color that peach color this one has that peach color behind it and I am obsessed now I'm obsessed I don't know that I will go back to using the stark white again. Um, this one has the stark white. And you can see how it's really kind of like glowing. So it'd be really nice for the snowmen. Um, it'd be really nice for the snowmen. Any of the ornaments that are like snowflakes, things like that. But it seriously glows through. And I felt like it was taking away from that blueness. Where with this one, I just love, I just love that warmth that it added. So I do have a recommendation of trying some off whites, not that stark white, trying some peaches, some pinkies. Um, and definitely, as Eileen said, um, I was trying to find more. My local store didn't have more. They had this and the white. And I searched. I searched. Um, yeah. They didn't have any organdy or anything like that that was any other color. But it would be fun to use if you have blacks and blues and reds and pinks and all these different colors. They will really add something. And it's worth trying out because I've only ever used that white. And it's not that I don't like it. I just really like that warmth. I think these two have. I just, 
because this is the same stabilizer, so you'll know it's not really a trick of the stabilizer. I just like, I don't like the starkness of this one, and I love the warmth of that. Keep them up there. Stark white, that peachy color. I thought it'd only be pretty on this one, and not that. Then I lost the other stuff, so. <laughs> much better dimension, right? There's almost a, I, I hate to say it, I'm going to say the word, um, but this is almost a cheapness. <laughs> this is almost like, I really didn't like the way this butterfly turned out. Um, lucky me, I don't get to use it. <laughs> I really, there was just something missing with this one. It would be interesting. Um, I also do think it's the lack of dimension in this design. But could you imagine a blue back there? Or a green or a purple or, oh, be so pretty. Okay. We can just dream about colors all day. I love to do it. I love to do it. This was me having a lot of fun. I actually have a poster right here that you can't see. And it's papillon. And it's all my um, butterflies and moths. and at first I was trying to be very literal with butterfly colors. And then I started to like be inspired by those colors and play with some things that were a little different. And that's when this guy came along and I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this one. That's exactly it, Sue. It, it looks like a beginner effort. It was like, this was good. But once I got to I don't know. It's just that warmth, that dimension. Oh, once I got to that warmth and dimension of that organza behind it, it was awesome. It was awesome. All right. Let's move right along. So, oh, don't use a wool. Don't use felt. <laughs> don't use anything too bulky. The The furthest I'd go um, on the like heavyweight fabric scale is quilting cotton. I wouldn't really go past that. Um, a cotton lawn could be nice. Um, I've never tried a linen. I'd worry about how much linen ravels, but the organza ravels a lot. Um, but stay on things that are more airy, a little lighter weight fabrics. Don't go into anything too heavy. Um, I can only speak to having done organza and cotton. I don't even know if other things are recommended. Great, great, great. All right. Let's talk thread, bobbin, tension, that whole shebang. So do not use a bobbin thread. Don't do it. Don't do it. I got away with it a couple times. I got away with it a couple times, but largely when I used a bobbin thread, I got this, which is frustrating. Let me come back. I got nastiness. Um, guessing is that freestanding lace is digitized to have incredible tension on the, because um, I don't think you even see much of your I guess I shouldn't talk about the digitizing of it since I would truly just be guessing. Um, but you don't necessarily want your thread to pull to the back a whole ton. Um, you want it to be fairly balanced. Um, it's not going to be balanced like a, just cause I'm treading lightly here because this is more trial and error and figuring it out than it is like science. So I don't want it to be like, if somebody comes to you with better information, <laughs> this is not the area to be like, well, Kate said this. This would be like, oh, okay. Weigh it out for yourself. Anytime I used bobbin thread, it did not go well. When I used my isocord, oh, this blue. Oh. When I used this isocord top and bobbin, that's when I got a really good result. I had almost no issues. You can see over here 
on this side, there's like no issues. Um, I also tend to have more issues when things cut a lot and restart over again. I will stop my machine um, if we're doing a bunch of things like this that cut a ton. I'll stop my machine a few times as it stitches just to double check, to cut any thread tails, to take care of anything that's getting weird because it does get weird. It does. I don't, maybe there's advice out there that I have not received yet <laughs> on how to make it not weird. Um, the best I can do at this point is to stop and cut it so that I don't get this nastiness. Um, I just shared a Instagram post. <laughs> Orlando said, I have lots of issues, none related to embroidery. Yeah, well, let's not even get started. <laughs> let's not get started there. I thought I was having a really fine ADHD day and y'all have seen how this has gone. So we're just going to keep on, keep on keeping on. Um, this is, this is the evidence to me. To me, this is the evidence. I used all isocord on the back of this one and there is no weird, oh, she's a beauty. That's the back. Oh, I'm proud of that. That's the back. There is no weirdness anywhere. Anywhere. Oh, she's a beauty. So use your isocord top and bottom. I have, like I said, um, I should say same weight thread, top and bobbin. Um, I have used, this was actually one of the threads that I had used to do the monochromatic butterfly. So this is a uh, 40 weight or fill thread. I did this top and bobbin and every color you see on here was this color. So I did that. That was really nice. Um, you can see my, oh, let's talk about that. <clears throat> This is a garment I'm making. I'm in a garment sewing class. And this is my bobbin for that garment. And this is my thread for that garment. So since I have this bobbin wound already, this yellow was the bobbin color for this yellow here, which is a different yellow. Um, I thought it was for the orange, but I didn't do it for the orange. But anyway, um, I don't necessarily match them, which I think, switch your bobbin when you change. Okay, did you, okay. This is exactly where I'm headed, Lynette. Perfect timing. Did you use just one color or switch your bobbin when you change your top thread? Both, both, yep. <laughs> I am answering that right now, it was perfect timing. Um, and this one has a little more, like this is from all the cutting that started to happen at the back and I haven't trimmed it yet. So that's a real life back of one of these butterflies. This has two different greens and the blue. I used the same green. Do I have a green? I don't even think I used green. No, I didn't use green. I used black for the green. And I used all the same blue. Um, I was trying to use as few bobbins as possible. I have quite a few. Let's see what all we got. And then the white and the black. So I was trying to use as few bobbins. Maybe I took the green off. No, I don't think I used green in the bobbin. So I was trying to use these as few as possible, um, as few bobbins as possible. I used these two bobbins for all of this. This is actually a, a light pink here. There's white, there's a light pink, and then there's a light tan. And I used this light pink for all of it. Because you still want the back to look good, um, but it's not. This is, I, I knew that these were going to be. How was that falling? I knew these were basically the backs weren't going to be showing. So I wasn't that worried about it. And even though the backs 
do show. I mean, here. I could show the back of that. That could go on anything. That'd be no problem. It looks beautiful. So, stay, and it's what I used to say for quilting too, is staying in a close color family for the top and bottom. Um, I would use this bobbin for this color, for this color, really if I wanted to for this color. Not worried about it. And also I'd use <laughs> this bobbin color for this one, this one, this one, this one, or, or white. As long as we're close and it's not like using a, um, that blue, like let's not do that. You won't be happy with it. Um, but definitely keep your bobbins to a minimum, especially Bernina bobbins for my Bernina people out there because Bernina bobbins are so easy to overfill. They are freaking huge. Oh, that's also part of why I just kept using the same bobbins. I have orange in right now. Let's see. It's also why I kept some of these color families in here because I want to get rid of these bobbins. I don't really, oh gosh. I was thinking about doing a challenge where I used all these leftover bobbin colors for something. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. I think I could do it. I think I could create some cute stuff. We have that, and then we have a white. Da, da, da. I tried. I tried. I, can't, I don't know how to show all those to you. So there we go. Um, we want the same tension. Anything else I have to say about that? I don't think so. Double check. Every two colors, I would take it off the machine. I would turn it over and I would snip whatever needed snipped and I would double check that everything was going good. And then once I started to do a lot of cuts like this, where it's all this cutting, this one is pretty gnarly on the back. That is because I mixed up that white bobbin, the white bobbin thread with the bobbin of white isocord. Such a bummer, but it still looks great. Also, don't sweat it that much. Um, so, yeah, with all these cuts, like I said, I'd stop every now and then. Make sure that um, thread tails aren't being a problem. Things aren't getting funky. You still want to keep a good eye on it. Um, and more than ever, you want to keep an eye on the back of it. <laughs> I tend to ignore the back of it and then I'm in trouble. Um, check the back off. In. Oh, don't use the gold bobbin case for my Bernina people. They're in a four, five, or seven series machine. Don't use the bobbin case. We don't want to yank all that tension to the back. It'll just cause problems with the thread. Use your regular bobbin case. It's going to be great. Okay. Don't forget to ask your questions. Um, and that is true, Lynette, that you can choose how much thread to wind on your Bernina bobbins. Oh, where did I just throw them all? Over here. You can choose how much thread. I have a terrible time estimating, so I end up with crap like this. You do not need that much bobbin thread for a freaking dress. <laughs> Even a dress with my measurements, you don't need that much bobbin thread, okay? So we're going to, I think I'll do a little embroidery challenge and try and use up these bobbins. Um, I think that'd be fun, right? A little embroidery challenge. Okay. Last but not least, this is the this is my favorite tip on the planet. Um, I am going to do videos about it. I am going to shout it from the rooftops. It changed the game, and I'm obsessed. So we have hooped our stabilizer. I talked about how it's slippery, and there's nothing else in the hoop to allow you to keep it all together. That's not what I want to say. There's nothing, there's not enough girth. There's not enough um, volume that it holds together really well. 
two layers of a stabilizer and a quilting cotton, that stays together really well. There is enough bulk there that this hoop can really grab on. Two layers of a mesh, your hoop, I mean, it can be so tight. It is like ridiculous. Um, and you could still get some slippage, especially if we are doing a major hoop, um, if we're doing a major design and it's a bigger hoop. We won't have too many problems with this, but these T-pins, best tip ever. I got these T-pins. I hoop like normal. And then I add the T-pins in the corners and on each straight side so that they are, let's see if I can show you. Yep. See how they are right up against that hoop? This means that if this pushes in and we start to get some slippage, these T-pins are stopping it. It's not happening on these T-pins, watch. And they are, I mean, these are for real. My grandma used to make shears, drapes, and these were all over the house. Well, they, they were definitely all over the sewing room. I think I got one in my foot once and then no kids were allowed in the sewing room anymore. And you had to wear shoes if you went in. Um, but these are some serious like dressmaker, drape making T-pins. They are intense, intense, intense. So I just, while I'm, um, when I was hooping, let's see if I can do this. I don't have my other thing set up. Okay. So I just go to the, oh, got myself right in the finger. Uh, to the back, we turn it, get it right up like this. And we are, I am, the reason why I stabbed myself is because I am trying to stay directly on there. So it can be a little tough. Don't stab yourself. Take your time. For my Bernina people who push their hoop through and birth it, just that little bit, don't do that. That's also why I stabbed myself. Um, don't do that when you first, don't do that before you put your T-pins in. You can do it after you put your T-pins in. They'll move just the tiniest little bit and it'll really secure it. That's just for my Bernina people or people whose machines need that. If you don't need it, don't worry about it. But that is my favorite. That's my favorite tip that I've ever gotten <laughs> about uh, wash away stabilizers. Like I said, especially if you're using, um, if you're using something like this, this means that we're doing a ton of freestanding lace. There is a ton of needle perforations happening. It could start to degrade, it could start to shrink, it could start to move and shift and slip, and those T-pins will stop you from doing that. Something else I wanna note, I didn't write this down, oh, we're at 904, so I'll wrap it up, um, is when you do a hooping, don't put a thousand things in there, okay? Um, there, You do want to do kind of like, I know we all wanna put together the most amount of freestanding lace possible in one hooping, um, and that hoop will take a long time to stitch out, but that's okay. You've got all day. Doesn't matter. Um, that's fine. But don't forget to add layers of your aqua mesh if you're going to do that. If you're going to fill a whole maxi hoop full of pieces of your gingerbread chalet, they have a gingerbread chalet. <laughs> so if you're going to do it with your gingerbread chalet, then you want to... Um, Add layers of aqua mesh. Definitely use the T pins. Um, know that you can't do a whole gingerbread chalet on this two pieces of aqua mesh. I know this because I tried and it didn't work out. Okay. So if you're going to hoop a couple things, um, I did a oval hoop. I don't know if I have an oval hoop. Oh, I do. I did an oval hoop with three butterflies in it. Um, and that worked fine. I, I understand wanting to group things together to get as, as much time out of this stabilizer as possible. So I don't know if you saw it in the description. I don't know how many of you checked the description, but there are, of course, 
links to any of these things if you would like to check out these stabilizers. But that's not the important thing. If you go past that, you will get to the hooping class. I have decided I was going to add a hooping segment to stabilizer school. And then I realized let's make it its own class and let's make it free because I thought it would be really useful for beginners, get their toes wet, get some good information so that they can have access to great embroidery too. So sure. if you want to know, um, I have not decided if this will be free forever. It might not be. I don't know. I don't even know if I'll mention that again, but Y'all that are here, y'all that watch these, I want to make sure you get into that class. Um, so get on the wait list. Do it. I will email you when it's done. We are looking at a launch date. I will not say it now because um, I'm not ready to be held to it. <laughs> I'm not ready for you guys to make me accountable to it. But it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So it will be all about hooping freestanding lace about hooping garments, about floating, about floating underneath, about ways to save money on um, stabilizers while you hoop, about um, common problems you can have and how to fix them. And if you're having this problem with your embroidery, this could be your hooping. Um, tips and tricks for perfect hooping every time, every type, uh, some of my favorite things. So, <clears throat> If you're already in, and I, I'm, I think everybody here is already in Stabilizer School or Be Genius or um, Pinpoint Placement Perfection, those are the three classes that I have out. You already know how Member Vault works. It's going to be in Member Vaults, which is really nice. Let me put this in here for y'all. And this hooping class is going to be legit, y'all. That's going to be great. Um, get on the wait list for the hooping class. There we go. So if y'all want to be on there, get on that list so that you can make sure you get it right away. Um, yeah, that's it. I have in a very non Kate, um, maneuver. I have the rest of the year planned out with content um, and with content and the classes and all these things that are coming out and really exciting stuff that I am launching. And I am so excited that all night um, I think that's why I have this really excited energy is because I've spent the day thinking about you guys and all I want to do is tell you what's coming up. So the best way to know what's coming up before anybody else is to be on the email list, of course. I think all of you or most of you are on the email list who are here right now. Love you all. Um, and yeah, there is big stuff coming. Oh, so excited. I will say there's an embroider along coming because I already promised that and it's coming. I figured out what we're going to do and I am so so excited. So, all right, y'all. Any questions before you head out? I'm going to do a song and dance here for a second. I'm going to chill so that people can ask questions, ask questions about the hooping class or stabilizer school or anything. Um, and then we're going to peace out. So if you are, if you want to chat, you can chat. <laughs> y'all a quiet bunch tonight. Do, do, do. Um, this will be a blog post eventually. Thank you so much, Francie. No, oh, now I want to call you Francie for coming to hang out. This will be a blog post eventually. This is your preview. I'll let you know when it's up. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you know when it's up and ready for y'all to see it because I am really excited by how cute it is. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute. Thank you so much, happy Easter to you too. I get to go see Miss Jade, I'm really excited. 
I'm gonna head down south to go see my stepdaughter tomorrow night. First, I gotta learn to sew this dress. Look at my dress. It'll be the perfect Easter dress, I just realized. Yay! Yay, yay, yay! Yes, I know it's a ton of info. I'll send pictures. This is the back, but the front's over there. Oh, forget it. I know it's a ton of info. Thank you so much, Jean, for coming to hang out. Jean said a lot of good info to absorb, and it is a ton of info. Um, we will revisit freestanding lace as a group at some point. Um, God, I'm just, I, I got to get off of here. I'm just itching to tell you guys all this stuff coming up. And it's no fun if I tell you all now. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, every person who is here. I appreciate y'all. You're the best. Mwah. I will see you next Wednesday. Thank you.